Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody here this evening to our webinar on the Willoughby Leisure Centre pool area upgrades. My name is Angela Casey and I am the Culture and Leisure Manager here at Willoughby City Council. Also tonight we have Joseph Giamandico, who's the Project Manager at Council who's looking after the pool hall project for us. And we'll also be having a presentation from Ian Brewster from Brewster Hawth Architects, um, who'll be showing us through the design a little bit later in the webinar. I'd also like to welcome this evening Willoughby's Mayor, Gail Giles Gibney, who I'd just like to introduce briefly to say a few words to us this evening about the webinar and the project. Over to you, Mayor Gail. Thank you, Angela. Uh, what a pleasure it is to be here on webinar. And I think uh, while COVID 19 has presented a number of challenges to council it certainly has provided some opportunities and one of those opportunities is uh, the opportunity to broaden our community engagement i'm very pleased to see the amount of participants that we have who have dialed in to take advantage of this relatively new way of making sure that our residents are across what we've got planned for council but also have the opportunity to provide feedback and an interactive process, uh, questions, those kinds of things. Um, of course, the Willoughby project has, uh, the Willoughby Pool project has been a long time in the making. Uh, certainly a great deal of thought and consideration. Um, ideas have been batted about from a council perspective. So very pleased to be presenting these plans to you tonight and we look forward to having a further discussion with our community because after all, it is a community project that we're considering. So um, thank you very much. And thanks to the officers. I know they've put their heart and soul into getting it to this stage. So we look forward to progressing it. Thank you. Thank you, Megail. As, as Megail mentioned, this is a relatively new way of us doing community engagement. So I just thought I'd run through a few housekeeping details to make sure um, we all know um, how to I guess behave and participate in the webinar this evening. So all your microphones have been muted and the cameras have been switched off. You will see a, a chat menu as um, we progress through the webinar where that'll be open for you um, for any questions you might have as we move through the presentation about the design or the project in general. So please make use of that chat menu and we'll do our best to uh, get back to you with the answers to the questions this evening. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on Council's Have Your Say website over the coming days. Just wanted to start this evening with some background information about the project. As many of you will know, Willoughby Leisure Centre opened 30 years ago this year, back in, in 1990. Um, many of us can remember when the pool first opened and it was very cutting edge for a leisure and recreation facility. What we find now is our pools are, are at capacity and they're really reaching the end of their, of their life. Um, there's limited opportunities for us to expand our programs given the design of the current pool. Often with new aquatic facilities, we'll have multiple bodies of water that can all be at different temperatures and different depths, for example. And that really gives us a lot of flexibility with the sorts of programs that we can offer. Whereas at the Leisure Centre at the moment, we have one main body of water, which is the 25 metre pool. And, and what we find is we're trying to do a lot of various activities in that one body of water. Often those activities need different temperatures and depths. So we end up with a situation, for example, where we've got uh, learn to swim happening in a, a pool body of water that's too cold and too deep for many of the participants, yet the water's perhaps too warm for some of the lap swimmers who prefer um, it cooler to, to exercise more effectively. So there's really a lot of compromise going on with the current design and layout of, of the pool hall. We know that we've got poor sight lines because of the way the pool was designed. We've also got a spa and sauna that are located off the pool deck, which it makes it quite difficult um, for us to supervise those bodies of, of water to make sure that um, our customers are kept safe. Um, as many who swim in the pool will know, we've got a large chamfer down one end of the pool shell, which makes it quite difficult, particularly for our, our lap swimmers. So there are some design issues with the current pool. Um, as I mentioned, the, the pool is now 30 years old. Uh, we do have some concrete cancer, both in the 25 metre pool and also in, in the leisure pools. Our spa is in a very poor condition. Um, it's very difficult for us to um, 
continue to maintain it. And the plant room, which many of our, our well, most of our visitors would never have seen is actually also in, in very poor condition and below industry standard. Many of you will remember back in, in 2012, um, a consultation that went on regarding the leisure centre and, and plans to, to substantially increase its size, including um, mention of perhaps a 50 metre pool. As Mayor Gow mentioned, the leisure centre pool upgrade has been um, around for a long time, the idea and the consultation um, has, has reflected that. The plans that came out of the 2012 consultation um, never had funding attached to them. And in 2018, it was decided to develop concept plans that really focused on the pool hall only and didn't um, so much look at extending um, the overall size of the leisure centre substantially. In, so in 2018, some concept plans were developed that really focused on the pool hall. And then in 2019, the following year, council resolved to develop these designs into a more detailed um, set of designs. Earlier this year, Brewster Horth architects were appointed and to develop the concept designs to a schematic design scheme um, and with some input from key stakeholders, including major users of the pool. That schematic design was then reviewed by council um, just last month. And this is where we find ourselves tonight. Um, with really excited to be able to show the community the schematic design that Brewsters have developed and talk you through um, the ideas and, and plans for the site. So at this point, we're going to hand over to Ian Brewster, who's going to um, talk us through the designs and the schematic plans. So um, just in the Masters of Technology, we'll now switch across to, um, to Ian and he'll talk us through the design. Hello, good evening. How are you? Uh, can everyone hear me? No. Yes, we can. You can. Fantastic. So I'll just um, continue and share our screen so I can show a short presentation. Go share. Yeah. Can I get the okay that that's working? All good. All good. Okay, fantastic. We're getting pretty good at this uh, after a few months of practice. Um, so tonight I'd just like to uh, make a very quick presentation to you all um, on our designs for the new Willoughby Leisure Centre upgrade. Um, my name's Ian Brewster and uh, Maria Kalila, uh uh, one of our very senior associates uh, who's been working on the project is, uh, is with me here tonight and she'll probably be able to um, um, answer technical questions that I'm, I might fall at the, fall at the hurdle. Um, so I'd like to start off with a, an aerial view um, of, the, uh, of the site. Now you can see with the, uh, the, the pink areas, uh, that's the additional new, um, new areas that the upgrade involves. And there's really sort of three major new roofed areas that are added on to various parts of the existing building. Now, of course, we'll also be looking at the car parking. The car parking shown there at the moment is, in a, is a, a sort of a, an adjustment layer of the existing parking, but that'll certainly be reviewed as uh, part of the development uh, application process to ensure that we've got the proper number of cars. Now, I'd like to take you on a fly through through the design as probably the best way of, um, of describing what our proposal is. We're going to start off at the front entrance. And as you can see, um, we've got new signage and a new timber feature wall um, facing onto the car park as part of the new entry. To your left, you can see the new outdoor area to the creche. So the creche has really been improved um, and given a, made into a much more pleasant space. Now I'm just going to sort of press the button and by magic take us through a bit of a walkthrough of the building. So we're coming in through the front doors and into the new reception area through the new security gates so that uh, they'll include a whole host of new sort of 
access services for um, for members and guests. Now, there's a new reception area uh, with a new cafe instead of the existing canteen. Um, and of course, at the moment, it's all very notional, the set out, but that will include um, a servery area for food and sweets and lollies and stuff. Um, and the reception area will have a, a, a lower section that um, will be available for use, uh, people in wheelchairs and uh, more accessible. Um, and then we're creating a new entry to the pool hall from this space. Uh, and I'll just, we'll just go through and walk towards that now. So you can see through the windows into the pool hall that's been, the existing pool hall that's been upgraded, uh, down the new stairs, through the new doors and into the wonderful pool hall. Look to our right, over the 25 metre, the learn to swim pool. And now what we're looking at now, the new, uh, the new roof that's added on to the existing roof. One of the first things, the most obvious things you'll notice is that the roof uh, is constructed of very large timber purlins. Um, they're very, it's very much part of um, our environmental design response and also, luckily, they're also much better than steel to use inside pool halls. Um, they don't um, uh, decay nearly as quickly as the steel does and you'll probably notice that in the existing steel structure. So we're looking here at the new Learn to Swim School, uh, Swim School pool, pool sorry. Um, which is about 19 metres by 10 metres. Uh, it's got a ledge seat built into either side of the pool that's about half a metre below the surface of the water. And the pool itself is a one metre constant depth. It has four lanes, uh, but multiple anchor points so that it can be divide, subdivided up into many different um, uh, arrangements for use of numbers of different um, schools at the one time, or a number of different classes. You can see in the background, there's new grandstand seating overlooking, well, everything in this part of the building is new, I suppose, so it's a bit of a bit redundant, but there's grandstand seating overlooking the end of the uh, Learn to Swim pool. Uh, obviously, there's always uh, lots of carers and mums and dads with their, uh, with their kids, so that we've given them a place to, um, a place to sit and wait for the, for the lessons. Now we're going to continue our walk around. Um, heading towards the new leisure pool. And in the distance, you can see the bucket and splash pad. And we look back across the learn to swim pool. So this is the kids leisure pool. It's in two halves. One half is a beach down to 600 meters, millimeters deep, which is two feet in the old language. Um, it's got bubblers and squirts and um, Oh, it was cannons, I think, although they're not shown on this model. And then at the other end, there's a wading area with a beach entry down to 300 millimetres deep, which is one foot deep for the, for the younger children. In the distance, you can see the children's bucket uh, splash pad. We've fitted the largest bucket that we could uh, manage to get in under the roof into this space. It's going to be, uh, I think, a fabulous and, and probably very popular attraction with all our kids who will drag us off here. <laughs> Can we go to the bucket? At least my kids love going to the bucket at, uh, at um, the, the Olympic Centre. And they've proved to be very popular wherever, wherever they've been used around Australia. You can see here to the left, the uh, walls open up to the new green, uh, the green wall to the street. We walk around the back of the bucket, uh, past the grandstand, and we look back at the learn to swim pool and the leisure pool. So in the distance, you can see the um, children's outdoor crèche area, which was next to the entry. You can see that right far in the distance. Um, then to the left of that, there's the new swim school office and storage area. And then next to that, there's the dedicated family change, which is, um, I think will be a fabulous, fabulous and use, very useful area for all those carers, mums and dads who are bringing their kids along to, the, um, to play in this area of the pool or to go to the swim school.
Now we just continue. By the way, at the moment, we're looking into the existing roofed area, which has been completely um, rebuilt um, with the new timber purlins. We're trying to keep as much as the, of the steel structure as we can um, for obvious reasons, um, but we've had to replace the purlins and that means we get a nice consistent roof over the two spaces. To the right of the screen, you can see the new entryway that we came in to get down from the reception down to the pool deck. You can see to the left of that is the existing grandstand and we've made that a little bit longer to match the whole length of the pool. And we've put some new uh, timber seating, bench seats on the existing grandstand. Right in front of us is the new 25 metre pool. Now it's a brand new pool. It's eight lanes, 2.25 uh, metres lane width. It has a ramp and stair access on the far side, which is on, next to the grandstand. It's 1.2 metres deep at the shallow end and two metres at the deepest end. Um, you'll be able to dive at the deep end um, from the fixed diving blocks and tumble turn at this close end. Turning to our left, you can see the uh, the new end wall and um, we've what we've got here is a new program pool, uh, which is four lanes. It's 22 metres long. It's 10.8 metres wide, but that includes the width of the uh, ramp and stair, I think, doesn't it, Maria? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. And um, it is, so it, because of its depth and its width, it can be used as additional learn to swim space if necessary, but it's also perfect for a whole range of different aqua aerobic um, and, and water exercise classes. You'll see in front of us right now, there's a, there's a seating area and that's for the use of the people um, who might be using the program pool. And it's really cool because we've got a new, um, uh, a new outdoor courtyard associated with this area. So and with access that can open up to that external area. As we swing to the right, we're now going to walk down along the side of the program pool and we're going to come to the new sauna and spa area. So the spa, it's, it's a fabulous new spa, two and a half metres by seven metres with built-in seats. It's about 25 square metres, which is I think about 15% bigger than the existing spa. And in the distance, you can see the new sauna, which is much bigger than the existing. It's fully lined in cedar with bench seating. It's even got, it's got the full uh, frameless glass front and it's even got a window to the outside. You can see through the window straight ahead, you're looking out um, over the netball courts and, to the, and, and over the valley. So I think this is just a, a fabulous outlook from this space with the floor to ceiling glass. Now, as we swing our head to the right, we look over the program pool and the 25 metre pool, and you can see in the distance, there's the new first aid room, uh, directly accessible from the pool concourse, some dedicated amenities. There's the lifeguards office next to that, and a really big area of pool storage for all the pool equipment so we can keep the concourse nice and uh, clutter free. Of course, there's concourse showers here that can be used with the sauna spa and there's concourse showers over the other side um, that are next to the entry that takes you to the existing change areas, which of course will remain. And that also will remain a, an entry into the pool area. Now we're going to finish our walkthrough um, walking along the base of the program pool, walking over to the 25 metre pool. And, and this is where you get a feeling for the, uh, the, the, the internal environment of the two spaces. And I think we've, the use of the timber purlins and the timber end wall creates a very, very special internal space, I think. Um, so we can look over to our left, we can see the new entry where we came in. Um, Straight ahead, we see the, the kids area right at the far end. The new indoor seating with access to the outdoor courtyard to the right of that. 
the new spa and sauna off to the right. The program pool, sort of straight ahead of us to the right. And the 25 meter pool straight ahead of us to the left. And there's the existing grandstand to complete the picture. So now we'll finish the fly through or the walk through just by walking to the corner and looking out over the fantastic, glorious new pool. So you can see it in all its, its wonder. Now I'd like to show you a more, a more mundane view of it, I guess, in plan. So you can see here's the plan layout. It's easy enough to see the big 25 metre pool uh, eight lane 25 metre pool in the bottom left. Next to that, the program pool to the right. Above that is the learn to swim pool. And above that are the children's leisure pool and the children's bucket splash area. And you can see what we've done is we've zoned the spaces, if you like. So with most of the children's oriented facilities are to the top half of the plan or the northern part of the plan. Whereas the serious, more serious swimming um, lap swimming and the uh, more serious exercise, aqua exercise areas are in the bottom half of the plan area. And then the upgrade of the, um, the foyer and entry, etc., is for to the right. So just to, to recap, I'm going to press a button and a little dotted line is going to show you the path that we followed when we walked around, when we walked around the pool down the stairs and then up past the learn to swim, around the leisure pool. We came up and then we went around the bucket, down past the learn to swim pool, around through the new lounge area, down to the sauna spa. And from there we went right back to the far corner and looked out across the whole, um, whole pool. You can see in the, um, uh, I'm gonna use my mouse to point here and I hope you can see it. But you can see here, this group of new facilities next to the Learn to Swim pool includes the Learn to Swim office and um, uh, contact point for public with the big window. So, so that's where the, the users of the, the mums and dads, I suppose mainly can go on carers, can go to the Learn to Swim office and consult there and make bookings and so forth. And then directly next to that is the new family change areas, which has got three enclosed large family cubicles um, four open shower areas and a big change table right in the middle. And we found that that's really a useful in, in other projects. We found that's been a very popular um, facility because you can just pick your child up, sort of stand them in front of you on the low table and dry them off and get them dressed. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really quite good. And then down the bottom here, um, Next, at uh, the end of the 25 metre pool, as you can see the lovely large piece of storage, the storage area that, that we're building so that uh, all the pool equipment can be stored off the concourse. And then over here to the right, uh, you can see where the sauna spa and with its own accessible WC um, is located. Now, sort of just one last thing, I want to give you some sort of feeling about the, the size and how, and how the, the building sits into its environment. We've, um, um, I think I pressed the wrong button. We're gonna to have to go through our walkthrough again. We'll do it quickly um, following that path. So what I want to take you to next is a cross section we've done through the building as, our, as it links onto Small Street. So you can see here, it's pretty low scale, even though it's a large building. So here's the roof of the building coming down uh, at Small Street, at the Small Street frontage. There's, the, there's, some, there's a family walking along the footpath on Small Street. You can see here's the, where I'm hovering the mouse pointer at the moment. That's the, sort of the existing residential buildings on Small Street. So you can see in scale, really the building is really uh, quite comparable to the size of the hill that's on Small Street. Um, this whole facade, even though it's glass, will be all double glazed and that will be good for the, for the heating and ventilation of the building, sorry, the heating of the building to prevent the heat coming in in summer and the cold getting, getting uh, in in winter. Um, it does have an opening, um, an opening facade with um, 
the big concertina, vertical concertina doors. They'll be double glazed as well. And then there's a green wall sits in front of that. The green wall has got a, a nice solid wall built into the middle of it. So for an, as an acoustic barrier to stop the sound coming to the residential, hopefully directing it upwards. But even so, even then, the most of the time this door will be shut because we only get to open it when the ambient conditions, the outside conditions are uh, even hotter than the ambient conditions. So that's a view of how the building fits into its environment. And I just want to finish our walkthrough, going back to that wonderful internal view from the corner. So Joseph, I guess over to you. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for that lovely presentation. I hope, I hope it all worked well. Did the technology no, no, it, work it, okay? It, it worked really well. And thanks to Maria and the rest of the team there at uh, Brewster York. Because I know a lot okay. of works Shall I to... stop the share now? I'll stop a share and you'll take over. Is that right? No, no. The, the, the reason is I want to be the first one to test that bucket, the splash bucket. That's my... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Th thanks again. I'm just going to move on to the next stage. We're at the next steps. Um, just getting that uh, on the screen. There, okay. Uh, just housekeeping things. Um, You'll need to, com all the participants, complete your Have Your Say survey by the 30th of September, 2020. And all that feedback will be reviewed and will help finalise the design going forward. Uh, DA lodgement date of 2020, uh, in, a, in conjunction with that, there's also um, a Sydney North planning panel uh, submission that's required because it's a significant uh, development application. Um, that's an independent uh, body, so that, that's also required. And we're looking at construction starting by late 2022 um, and uh, a build of approximately 18 months, but that'll be finalised once we appoint the contractor. Um, as part of the DA, we're also going to be um, submitting a construction management plan. Now that's important because that's going to incorporate things like um, areas that are going to be closed off during construction, um, truck loading, unloading areas, and uh, contractor site compound, um, and will indicate areas that uh, will be closed off as well. Um, yeah, I think I'll hand you over to Angela now for the okay. question. Thanks, Joseph. Uh, the next part of the, the webinar is really focusing on, on questions um, from the participants. And thank you, um, we've already got a, a few through, so thanks um, for people to send, for sending those through. We'd also had some questions prior to this evening, which um, we've tried to address as we've gone through the presentation. Um, but if there's anything um, that people still want um, further information on, then please do keep sending through your questions. Uh, the first question, um, Ian, we'll need you to go back to you and share your screen with the, the plan so you can talk through the response, is, um, is what's happened to the physiotherapy rooms? Now, this question came through quite early on in the walkthrough, so I think we probably answered it before we got to the end of it, but you might just want to um, indicate where we've relocated the, um, the physiotherapy room to. Sure, sure, Angela. I'll, um, I'll just continue and share our screen, shall I? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Sure. That one. Okay, so I'll just look at the plan and you can see that the physiotherapy room that used to be in this area here and it's now become our new entry, the physiotherapy room has, been, has become larger and has moved to this area here, which is where the existing sauna, a spa is, I think it's a spa. Yeah, the existing um, spa area, that's right. Yeah, at the, at the bottom of the ramp. So it's still easily accessible um, and, uh, ex and, and accessible uh, by wheelchair um, and um, by the ramp there. And uh, it's close to the entry. So we think that's a good compromise because it's allowed us to get good access through to the, um, to the pool. Thanks, thanks Ian. The next set of questions really relate, um, probably best if you can pull up this section drawing from the view from Small Street. There's just a few questions um, that you might be able to talk us through um, by indicating from the plan there. Um, 
the first question is, will the new green wall form um, part of the pool enclosure? I think that's really meaning part of the, um, I guess, that wall of the pool. Yeah, I think the question is probably related to the, uh, the facade. It's not part of the facade, am I right, Ian, there? Um, separate the, from the... It's separate from the facade. It's, yeah. it's probably a bit confusing on that drawing there. What you're seeing is it's sort of like a U-shaped wall. So at the end of the wall near the entry, it turns round and so we're seeing the back of that yeah. in the weather. And I think that the, the question is, and given this face is north, how will this be irrigated? Um, look, we haven't actually got to that level of detail yet. Um, because we've, we've done a, a few green walls, um, some of them we've built have sort of full trees inside them. Um, so they're more like really solid hedges. And others that we've built are quite like uh, covered in, in fast growing vines and, and creepers. And this, this will be more that style of green wall. It'll be a fast growing vines and creepers. So the, the roots of course will be in the ground at the bottom of the wall and that's probably where they'll be watered on both sides. So Thanks, I think Ian. The, the next question is um, just regarding the pool storage area on the southern end of the pool hall, whether that's bench seating in front of the pool storage. Oh, is that bench seating there in front of the pool storage? You do room? have some bench seating in front of that pool storage. So you can open, it's generally around the columns. So just on either side of the columns, we have some bench seating. So you can um, view the 25 metre pool. And then we've got openings to that pool storage, which is essentially large doors so you can get large equipment in and out. Can you see it on, on you the can side? You can just side. Yeah, see it there. Yeah. I was going to say it's wrong. <laughs> Hi, Mo. Yeah. Really wide angle that view, isn't it? So we, yeah, you no, just seeing that. See that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Ian. Then just another one back to the um, small street facade, or the facade facing small street. What's the proposed height of the solid wall to small street? Well, that the height of the solid wall to small street at the moment. Don't forget, it won't appear solid. It'll appear covered with greenery, but it's around about um, uh, thirteen. 100 high, isn't it? So what, I don't know what that is in the old language. It's about four foot six or something. Um, yeah, you can yeah. see on foot. <laughs> I'm metric all the way. Metric all the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make me feel. <laughs> so it's about 1.3. Yeah, you're yeah, about right. 1.3 metres. Thanks, Ian. Uh, then the next question relates to the length of the program pool. A query as to why it's um, only 22 metres long. Um, where as a 25 metre program pool could provide additional lap swimming. Um, given we're not looking to put in a 50 metre pool, this seems it would provide the same lap swimming capacity. Maria? Um, the, the size of that actual pool is sort of governed by the existing structure. So the reasoning behind the program pool being um, a little bit shorter than the 25 metre pool is essentially because we have columns um, on the right hand side really where Ian's pointing. So, I mean, what we've done to mitigate that is basically create a, that outdoor seating space um, with a courtyard because essentially we're governed and restricted um, on the concourse width there because we've basically trying to maintain a two metre concourse. Mm. Mm. We actually um, made this pool a little bit longer than the approved master plan, even though it's got the same footprint. Because on the approved master plan, it's got the ramps on the top end, I believe. Now, I might be making that up because it's a one. But I, yeah, so, so I think what we did is we took that ramp from there and put it to the side, which made the pool a bit longer. That's right. But look, unfortunately, well, or fortunately, depending on which way you look at it, the site has got a triangular side to it. And that's meant that the building is that, the, you can see how the bu building steps up and down to fit into that boundary. And it's just a fact of life that we just don't have the possibility of building under that bit. Um, there's the flat rock drive and all the um, earthwork and, and, and retaining walls and so forth that support it get in the way. So that's really the answer of that one. We would make it longer if we could make it longer. Okay, 
Thanks, Ian. Then a uh, question regarding where the main change rooms are other than the family change room. Uh, I think as, as Ian mentioned, the existing change rooms, um, which were renovated in the past couple of years, they will be remaining. Um, given the site constraints, there's a limit to how many or how much space can be devoted to change rooms on the, the pool deck itself. So um, the main change rooms will remain as they, as they currently are down the ramp access. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good compromise. Um, the the family change will be heavily used because um, it's so convenient for kids and families who are using this uh, top end of the of the site. Um, I call it top end because it's north is at the top of the page, but it's all flat to one level. Um, we've found in in other pools we've done that the family change gets a lot of use. Um, and that will drag a lot of the use out of the existing change rooms uh, and give more room for them to be used by others. And of course, the same entry, they'll still have exactly the same entry as they've got at the moment through the current doors, uh, and it'll be down the stairs or down the ramp to those change rooms. Thanks, Ian. Um, the next question is regards to access, um, will, will there be pool exercises in the new program pool, as there now is in the um, in lane eight of the main pool. Um, if I've understood that correctly, then then yes, definitely. That's um, the main reason that we are investing in building the program pool is so that there's a space um, that we can have a warmer temperature for and, and correct depths to enable us to um, continue with the current aquaerobic program and also look to expand that so absolutely there's a few other questions just as i scan down that i can probably answer i think at the same time regarding the program pool um whether individuals will be able to use it um yes if it's not being used for for programs then that would be a, a, a body of water that people could come in and use um, i think that might be it on the program pool um, there's another question regarding another, why isn't there another pool of 25 metres in length, which I think um, Ian's sort of covered in, in his previous answer there. Um, a question regarding whether heating to the main pool will be upgraded. Um, yes, it definitely will. I don't know, Ian, do you want to answer that in, in any more detail, just with regards to how we are approaching the heating? Um, the heating will be um, done with um, uh, electrically driven heat exchangers using green energy, um, uh, which is the most efficient and cost efficient, most energy efficient, cost efficient and greenest way of heating water. Um, and the, so, uh, I mean, that's the, that's the short answer. The, um, the, of course, the pool will be equipped with um, effective uh, heat blankets. So they'll be, the water will be covered, the water body will be covered um, when, it's the, when the building is closed and when it's not in use, and that'll help us retain heat into the water. Um, the air temperature in the pool hall will be at about the same temperature as the water temperature to stop, uh, to stop heat loss and to maintain energy use, which Unfortunately, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's just mandated now by, um, by um, operators and by the building code to make sure that the, the um, energy use is reduced. So that's the long answer and the short answer together. <laughs> um, thanks, Dean. It's probably also a good linkage in there for some of the other um, sustainable measures that we're looking to incorporate into the, the upgrade, which I know there's been some interest in. Are you able to touch on a few of those other features? Maria, do you want to talk about those? Yes, yeah, so we're um, looking at putting solar PV on the roof. Um, so we're looking to put that on the both the um, new pool hall and I understand the existing building. So we'd be pulling energy, solar energy um, to assist with uh, Electric, um, electric in the building basically to substitute the substation at times and to just um, we're also looking at I think basically water top up from the rainwater tanks so you'd be looking at water top up which is another initiative which is um, we do on similar projects 
So that, those two are, we're looking at in detail now. So we're benchmarking this against uh, Green Star at the moment, just having a look at any other initiatives we can add to the project, essentially. Mm. There's a lot of there's a lot of smaller initiatives, but they're the main ones that affect the energy use. One of one of the one of the main things we can do is to make sure we've got a very efficient insulated envelope, building envelope. Um, so that's why all the glazing that we use will be double glazed uh, to stop heat loss. Um, and um, the solid walls will be much more effectively glazed than than the existing um, walls. I think people are caring in the last 30 years that society has developed um, a much greater care for um, energy use and the cost of energy. And uh, so we're hoping to really um, uh, make some dramatic improvements, not terribly, uh, shall I say, spectacular um, uh, sort of uh, improvements that would catch the imagination. It's sort of more behind the scenes, um, non-noticeable improvements that really affect the energy use of the building to keep it as green as possible. Okay, thanks Ian. And we are working very closely with council's sustainability team um, to make sure that these measures are integrated from the beginning and, and following the Green Start design sort of principles um, as we move through the design. Uh, just a question here, whether there's any opportunity to have more natural light on the northeastern wall, Ian? More natural light? Um, so is that this wall here we're talking about? Uh, I suppose I it must be about, Yeah, I think they're talking about the, you know, the children's pools are on the top, the very top there, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've tried to create a really fun wall there um, that gets as much light as we can coming in um, and keeping most of the north wall glass. Now, part Ian, of the... We've just, Ian, we've just had some clarification there. It's the wall above this from the person who asked the question. I think, believe it's the wall above the sauna and spa. Oh, down here. Oh, this wall here. Um, so which is this wall that sort of in, runs through there. Um, look, what we've had to do is, um, I, I, as I was saying before, the rules of building have changed quite substantially since 1980, when the building was first built. In those days, uh, the expectation was that you could put as much glass in as you could afford to put, because glass was more expensive than solid wall. And the more you could afford to, the more money you had to spend is the, was desirable to put as much as you could in. Now, many of us who were designing buildings in those days still think along those lines. However, what's happened in the meantime is that the National Construction Code, the NCC, which used to be called the BCA, confusingly, um, has mandated the maximum amount of um, glass that you can have in the total building by controlling the insulation value of the total building. Gets rather technical and really complex, but the nub of the story is they're trying to keep us, make us use as little glass as possible. So we have a budget of how much glass we can use in the building to still pass the, the still get a construction certificate and be able to build this building. And we have whether wisely or not, that's, I, I'll leave it for you to decide, but we've taken that budget of glass that we have and we've allocated it in particular areas where we think it will do its best. So that's in this area here to get light into, um, into this area of the pool, um, over the top of the, the storage and facilities to get light into the 25 metre. This area here to get light into that into that lounge area, we've put some um, sort of porthole, some sort of fun porthole lights, which I'll switch to this. You can see some fun porthole lights behind um, the kids' splash pad and so forth. And then around the children's area, we've tried to maximise the light with the the green wall 
and and also the glass looking into coming connecting with the the entry and the and the um, uh, the crash the outdoor play area of the crash. We have yet to do our final. Now I'm going to get really technical here, but it's called a JB3 model assessment. And when we do that, that will tell us how whether we've hit the target or whether we can spend it, whether we've got a bit more glass to spend. If we have, then we're going to try and convince council to let us spend their money to put a little bit more glass in. But at the moment, I think from experience, without having yet run that final model, we think we're pretty close to the mark of the amount of glass we've got to spend. Maria's nodding. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think the, unfortunately, the, as the years progress, the NCC gets more and more onerous and um, we try and perform 10% better every time, which gets a little bit harder to put more glazing in. So, yeah. in, in addition to that. That's a really, thank you for that really detailed um, answer because hopefully it helps um, our participants tonight understand the, the balancing act that, that we're trying to achieve here. Okay, cool. We've just still got quite a few questions to get through, so I'll just keep moving through. Um, a question around integrated thermal pool blankets and whether these will be um, integrated into the design. I think we very briefly touched on that. I'm not sure if there's anything more you wanted to add, Maria? Um, so essentially, we're just putting the pool blankets along the perimeter of the concourse. Um, under the... Concourse. Under the benches. No, we're putting them under the benches. We're not putting them um, in ground. So they'd be concealed below benches and then basically um, at night, as Eve was saying, put over the pools to make sure that the temperatures are maintained. Okay, thanks, Maria. Then we've got a few questions here around um, traffic and parking. I think we touched on this very briefly, but... Um, in order to get DA approval for these designs, there will need to be very detailed um, traffic and parking plans. And we are very aware that this is already a site that's um, quite congested for car parking, particularly within the netball season. Um, so that is uh, looking at, at the parking, additional parking that may be required is, is something that um, will be part of the next stage of, of the design process. But we are very aware of the community's concerns around that. Will the spa and sauna area remain adult only? That's really something, I guess, more of an operational rather than a design question. Um, the way, I, I guess, the benefits we see to bringing the spa area more on pool, on pool deck compared to where it is now is there'll be much better um, visibility of that area from the lifeguards and also just, I guess, natural visibility from others using the pool hall. Um, in terms of the usage of it, that's um, probably something we'd consider further further down the track, but it sounds like there's a comment there that you definitely would like it to remain adult only. So um, we'll definitely take that on board. Uh, got a question regarding the timing with the second Harbour Tunnel, um, the Northern Beaches Tunnel, I believe. Um, at this stage, our understanding is well, they're still um, waiting on uh, an EIS for the Northern Beaches element of that tunnel. It's still in the, um, I guess, assessment stage. Um, so we don't have a clear timeline for um, when that A will be approved or, or B build, but obviously we're, um, we're keeping an, a, an awareness of what's going on um, with that proposed project by the state government. Uh, a question or a statement. It's a very long walk from the sauna and spa to the change rooms. Could the sauna and spa be swamped, swapped with the pool storage, which is very central and valuable space, but rarely used? Um, I don't know, Ian or Maria, would you like to um, answer that in terms of the layout um, and the reasons why we've located those two elements where they are? Uh, well, very quickly, I think you can see that um, we have to have the stair in the corner there, that's a fire egress stair or an emergency egress stair more likely. So it only leaves us with this space here that we can fit in um, on that diagonal. Uh, it's, you can see, you can compare the, the size of that with the size of this. There's no way that we could take those facilities and fit them there in that area. So because of that, uh, we've, lo we've located the sun and spa where they are and, and the pool storage where it is. Just the amount of space available. And it's also um, the visibility from the lifeguard office is actually better in the 
um, at the bottom of the um, plan just because you get the visual connection across that concourse, which means um, those three items that are grouped together, the first aid um, area. That's pretty much the view from the... Yeah, so the first aid, the um, lifeguard and the, um, and the storage area, because there's quite a lot of width at that area of the concourse, it's a lot easier to manoeuvre equipment into the storage in that area for um, staff. And it's also good for the, um, the lifeguards in terms of visibility of that concourse. So we sort of grouped all of those facilities together because it sort of makes a lot of sense in that regard. Thanks, Maria. The next question regards um, what happens to the old swim school. I'm assuming that's to the old swim school office. Um, perhaps, Ian and Maria, if you could just flick to the um, floor plan, we can highlight where that currently is. Yes, yeah, so basically we're looking to convert that to an additional meeting room. So that could be um, used by either the staff or potentially become a bookable space for um, once you're not using the meeting room. So we've got a new meeting room down below underneath the physiotherapy, which was where the sauna spa used to be. Um, so that, that swim school would convert to an additional office space, uh, sorry, meeting space, essentially. Is, it's the next question is whether the pool will be closed at the same time as the North Sydney pool when it's developed. Uh, not the North Sydney redevelopment, um, well, I think Ian and Maria are probably well placed to answer that given they're the architects for that scheme as well. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if you're able to answer that question, Ian. Um, our understanding is that DA has can, recently can, been approved. I can tell you that um, as of next Monday, the North Sydney project will be out to full tender with the builders. Yeah, so that would probably seem to indicate that that um, construction were completed before ours begins, I would have thought. I think it'll be pretty much, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's their plan. And uh, they're, they're very keen to progress their project and finish their project as quickly as possible, so. Okay, thanks, Ian. Uh, will the lap pool have an equivalent to the current Lane eight. I think that's talking there about a recreation zone potentially in the new development where at the moment we have a lane that's more for recreation um, swimming. Again, that's probably more of an, an operational rather than a design feature. And um, I would suspect that either that equivalent eight lane eight would potentially be in the program pool area. I'm just going to look across here to the leisure centre manager who might be able to confirm that that's what the intention would be for the operational area. The lane, the equivalent to lane eight now. In the program pool? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rose. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Um, will that area still have stairs into the water? So by that, I think you mean, will the current lane eight of the 25 metre pool still have stairs into it? Maria, would you like to answer that? So the 25 metre pool will have both stair and ramp access into that pool. So um, yeah, as Ian's showing on the screen, basically next to the grandstand. So we'd have that both on the 25 metre pool and the program pool. Okay, thanks, Maria. I'm just very conscious of the time here. We've got a few more questions to, um, so we will try and get to the end of the, the questions before um, we run out of time. Uh, question, can the 25 metre pool not be made deeper so the shall for the shallow end so the squads can dive from both ends like most competition pools? And then Joseph, do you want to step in on that one? Uh, I think that the the idea was to have, because we were a bit limited with the piers underneath the actual pool. And um, in order to make the other side deeper, we'd have to cut them down even further. So I don't think that can be. Yeah, it is, it is something we have had a look at after an initial um, feedback from a stakeholder um, session on that. Um, 
given it's come up again tonight, we'll, we'll go back and, and take another look. But as Joseph's mentioned, there's probably some um, sure. some structural reasons that, that will prevent that from happening. But if, if that's the case, then we'll definitely communicate that clearly. So there's a question that came through earlier just regarding the current slide into the pool is well used. Would you consider adding a slide? Um, I think this probably comes down to the space limitations we have for the children's area, but um, I don't know, Maria or Ian, if you've got anything to add on that? Uh, I, I, not really, I love slides. I just don't know where the best place to put one is in the rationale of this layout. It probably wouldn't go with the leisure pool, um, which is pretty full at the moment. Um, and we have the area allocated for this for the bucket, which I think will be tremendously popular. Uh, mm. Okay, I I mean, and I guess it's like a lot of designs when you have to make a compromise when there's sort of space and budget limitations as we have here. We we felt that the design for the children's area, including the bucket area, was. Um, probably a different feature compared to the current slide. Um, but yeah, happy to take comments on that. But I, I guess given the limitations of space, if a slide goes in, something would have to come out really in terms of the children's area. I'm just very aware that we're coming to the end of um, the session here. I think we've done quite well to get through all the questions. There's a few there that we haven't managed to answer. Um, what we will do is, is collate those together um, and we can probably just looking at the ones we haven't got to, we can just clarify those in the frequently asked questions that are already up on um, council's website and in the have your say section of our website. There's, as I said, only a handful there. And so we can clarify those um, within that setting. Hopefully that will um, probably be the most efficient way of doing that, I think. Um, so thank you very much for all those questions we've, you've, you've sent through. It's um, a really good way for us as the design and also the project team to just um, make sure that we've thought through everything and also um, helps us to rethink and make sure that we, we are meeting the aquatic needs of the community, which, as we said at the beginning, um, is really what this project is, is all about for us. Um, so that's that's really it for the presentation this evening. Um, once again, thank you so much for, for joining um, in the webinar, both from the council officers involved, but also from um, our architects, Maria and Ian. Um, we know that um, giving up a, a Thursday night to listen to a council project um, is a big commitment. So we really do appreciate that. Um, the, the best way, um, if you've got further feedback or questions is um, to visit council's Have Your Say website um, and you'll see the pool hall upgrade project on that have your say um, and we're open for for comments and feedback until uh, the 30th of september so please do make um, use of that that would be um, really good to, uh, sometimes you go away after these sessions and you think of extra things you want to ask so please um, don't be afraid to ask to put extra comments in um, and that's really it from us and thank you once again for your participation and thank you to mayor gail for um for coming along and doing that um, introduction at the beginning. It was much appreciated. That was great. Thank you very much.